script that's running on top of Gmail, but it's going to be showing its interface on a custom web page, right? Uh, so we'll see this live now, and then I'll just go and write it. It's going to load up that script. First, it's going to probably ask me for authorization. That's important. Let's see. All right, cool. So this is my personal email, so I'll be a little careful. Search for my favorite baseball team. Uh, so this is going to go through uh, my inbox and search for all the spam involving Red Sox that I may be getting. Um, and I can click on a particular email and it's got sort of the formatted message that it opens up. But again, except for the URL, you're probably not really seeing any Gmail. And I can actually, the, the sort of the deep link URL provides a mechanism for me to get back into the context of Gmail as a user. Uh, but this is an application that you guys could run. You'd authorize it against your inbox, and then you would kind of be able to do some interesting things around it. And people have done some really interesting things with it around visualization. So what's my response times when so-and-so emails me versus when I get an email from this other friend? Uh, am I most responsive at 8 a.m. or 8 p.m.? Uh, you can do some, a lot of and, and things around which tags are most popular. So you can write a lot of interesting things for yourself to get a little bit comfortable with the app script. So let's take a look at the code a little bit more. Um, and so this, this is a straightforward jQuery, right, for a web developer. This doesn't, uh, nothing is too crazy here. Um, but if I go to the, the GS file, so this is straightforward JavaScript, compliant JavaScript <coughs> that's running uh, on the Google servers. And you can see that it's, the API is so succinct. It's, you get the search query passed in from the, from the server, uh, from the UI. And then I'm basically getting all the emails for that search query, iterating through it, and basically creating two items, a link and a subject, and then pushing it to the UI. Right? So it's super simple to write this code, and, it's, and it can be actually quite fun. And uh, this is all happening in a browser. So now that you've seen kind of a pre-canned demo, so let me actually go and start with a, a fresh one. Right? So all you have to do is go to script.google.com, and all you need is a Google account. And it's a little slow. All right, so you get a splash screen. Uh, it's got a bunch of starter scripts. So I'll actually do one for a document because you saw the Gmail one. So I'm going to click document. And that's going to populate the editor with a bunch of code that may be useful for someone trying to automate a document task, right? Um, and again, I, I want to reiterate that I am on a, uh, I'm on a browser, right? So this, is, this will run on IE9 and above. Um, so you can use Chrome, you can use your Safari, and uh, what have you, and this is not something you have to install, you don't have to set up your Eclipse environment, this is all in a browser, and it's, it's a pretty full-fledged IDE, right? So I could, um, there's actually ways for me to, if I'm too lazy and I don't want to look at the, the API document, uh, I can just start typing in and say, okay, well, what's useful here, right? So you can you get the autocomplete all within the browser. Um, and furthermore, so let's actually um, you know, run this guy. So, what I want to find this function is useful, which is what it's basically doing is it's going to create a document, set a bunch of stuff around it. So you can see that it's interacting with the document as if it's an HTML DOM, right? So it's quite powerful. You can create nice formatted reports. Um, and actually, once this is created, you can actually export this as PDFs. Um, you can email it to people, all within the context of a script. So um, we hear about really interesting scenarios from small business owners how they're automating the invoicing process, right? So this combined with Google Wallet's API, potentially you're sort of doing the whole um, life cycle of a purchase order all within uh, the Google ecosystem. So let's, let's, let's learn this, right? So I'm gonna use the Google, the create document, and I'm gonna call this DevFest uh, document type. And then let's see, I'll call this hello DC. All right, so I'm going to have to save it. I can't run it without saving it, so i got to save it. So I'll call this uh, demo at dev test. Oop, dev test. <laughs> All right, save that. And then if I just hit run, it's going to save it. It's going to ask me to authorize it. Got to do that. Um, we care about security at Google quite a bit. Uh, run that, and now if I go to my drive, one, call what I call it, DevFest, and 
there's a document, and there it is. So the, it created a um, uh, it created a, a document on my drive with all the formatting and all the contents that I specified. Right. So people, what they do interesting things around templatize this and replace anything with the curly braces with a person's name or a person's address or what have you. So you can do some pretty fascinating things with it. So it's actually quite powerful in that regard. Uh, when you pull in things like spreadsheets, where you can uh, populate, uh, I mentioned that this is a finance API. So you can go pull in, you may have a portfolio that you may want to track and populate one column with the uh, current prices in the market. So you can actually have that automated as well. Um, so that's quite powerful. Um, there's actually a whole bunch of starter kits that we provide. So if I go back to my, if I go back and mark on screen, let's pick, um, let's pick calendar, right? So I'll pick calendar. And here you can see a whole bunch of things around being able to uh, create, an, uh, create a calendar, inviting people with email addresses. So if you're running a soccer league or trying to have something where you're inviting a bunch of people and you want to auto-create an event in the calendar, uh, you can do all of that through an automated script. So this really allows you to build some very interesting uh, piece of software on top of the Google ecosystem there. Um, and the great thing, like I said, again, is you don't have to provision servers. The quotas are actually fairly high. So if you go to the, de the developer center, it's like you can send out 2,000 emails or something along those lines, um, pretty high per day. Um, so you, if you just kind of do it for personal purposes, you can build out a pretty nice uh, rapport with the system. And I'll show one last thing, and then I'll open up questions. Let me go back to actually a, a recent project, and I'll show you. So go back to this guy, right? So again, you know, the, going back to the fact that it's all in the cloud, um, one of the things I can really do here that's, I think, quite powerful is I can uh, debug, right? So I can, put a break point if I can find it. Whoa, resolution's bad. All right, so that is, so you can see, if you can see, it's actually hitting a break point for a piece of code that's running on the cloud and giving me the call stack, giving me the arguments, giving me the memory that's currently there, and I can inspect it and I can go make sure that my variables are correct. Uh, it's not the common uh, write code, refresh, things are broken, you don't know why, go pull your hair out, try to code some more, refresh, right? This, this is JavaScript with a first class IDE where you can actually hit breakpoints, see memory, and change things around. Um, so I think that's quite, quite powerful, the fact that you don't have to install an IDE, um, so hopefully that's, that's something that you guys will find very useful as well. This is actually one of my favorite features. The fact that it runs on Google I think is cool, but the fact that I'm coding in a browser I think is even cooler. So, um, so I'll open it up for questions. Um, yeah, go ahead. Um, does it keep versions of the, doc, of the code that you're writing? Yes. Okay. Yes, I should uh, talk about that. So let me stop debugging here a little bit. Oh yeah, this whole like step through and all that stuff as well. Um, so everything is automatically, um, well, it's not automatically written. Everything can be written, right? So you can very quickly save a version. You can give it a name. I can just keep creating versions uh, if you want. Uh, and, and I can very easily collaborate. So I can share this code with another author of the code. And uh, him and I, or her and I, can start typing code and start editing together and make changes to this and add methods and capabilities. Uh, so that versioning and the sharing collaboration aspect is is all kind of baked in as well. Okay. Okay. So along the lines of sharing, is there a place that people are publishing scripts to share them, not just with individual? Developers? Yeah. Yeah. It's actually uh, we've done a couple of things. So one of the most recent blog posts will talk about how you can publish scripts as a web app to the Chrome Web Store. So you can actually deep link it. You can you know you can have a nice description of what it is. Uh, you can get feedback. You can get rated on it. That's a great way for you to get recognition. Or you can publish it to uh, the gallery, which is a little bit more. Um, <coughs> here I'll show you the gallery. The gallery is a little bit more. Um, what the heck is the gallery? Oh, it's not here. It's in spreadsheets. Um, I'll show you later. But the gallery does not have a lot of ways to provide feedback. It's a little bit more um, contained. Um, so we recommend that you publish it to the Chrome Web Store. That way you can have, so if you actually go to a new tab, um, I have a couple of apps here that I've pulled down from the Google App Store, so the, the Chrome Web Store, um, as a, uh, a web app written with Google App Store. Um, do you have any kind of database behind? Or yes. Spreadsheets? Yeah, yeah. So there's actually a, a few types of um, spreadsheets. Let's see, on this one. 
Yeah, so there's actually four ways you could save data. Um, you could write to a spreadsheet. It's a fine database for most people for limited amounts of users, limited amounts of data. Um, you can write and call out to JDBC. So if you have a database exposed to the internet, which not a lot of people do, you could, you could use that. Um, you could um, use ScriptDB, which is what I'm showing you here. Essentially, it's a NoSQL database where you can just store JSON objects uh, very quickly to a, a pretty big, beefy uh, system, and you can retrieve it quickly. And this actually, the, the quota for this is massive, so you can scale this uh, really well. So here's an example of how you may save a JSON object, and here's an example of how you query it. And it's, again, if you use MongoDB or any of the other NoSQL databases, the query syntax is actually quite powerful and very similar, where you can just say, give me employee ID 1 and state equal to Massachusetts. Uh, and very easily retrieve that object. And the, the awesome thing is you get back objects. You don't get a cursor or a table. You get an actual object that you can iterate through very quickly and bind it to UI or something like that. Um, and the last thing where you can actually store, uh, the fourth way you can store data is a, a properties store. Uh, that's more of a name value type thing. So uh, certain state variables and things like that. So. Is this going to be used in the happiness platform? Uh, it's actually separate from the App Engine platform. So the App Engine platform sort of, like, like I said before, if you want to uh, control everything about it, right? So we give you a, a Java runtime, a Python runtime with App Engine. In here, you're kind of working within the context of apps, Google Apps, which means Gmail, uh, Calendar, Groups, uh, Documents, Spreadsheets, things like that. So they are actually quite different. Um, so. You know, it's a confusing uh, distinction sometimes, but I think when you really think about, are you trying to just build a shopping cart application? Then App Engine is the way to go. Are you looking to build a collaboration application? Are you trying to build a uh, time tracking application, which has some calendar implication, things like that? Then App Script's the way to go. That's my advice. Okay. I, I know some web page that said automating frequent processes. Mm -hmm. And I, when I think of automated frequent processes, I think of workflow engines, I think of like a Kiss flow, for example, in the workflow. Does this uh, kind of hooks into that or elements of that? Yeah, so there are a lot of triggers that you can tap. So I'll show you a couple of triggers. Um, go back to my script. Where's my script? So if I go and click on here. So I can create a bunch of triggers, so I can do a time-driven um, trigger. Um, there's actually a couple other triggers that, um, let's see, yeah. Yeah, so this, if it's a calendar, I'll, I'll be able to get a couple more different types of triggers. But in just a simple example is a time-driven trigger. So I can have it, uh, have a particular script run at midnight every day. I can have the script exposed as a service that someone else can call in, like a webhook and then the script will run. Uh, I can have it run once, once a day, uh, once an hour. Just gotta be careful with the coda, um, uh, but that's about it. So it's, there's a lot of things like that. Um, and then when you're doing um, spreadsheet-based triggers, you can actually tap the on edit or on open triggers as well. So you can have a, when I open a spreadsheet, you could authorize the user and see if that person can see this record of data and things like that. So there's actually quite a bit of automation and workflow stuff that you can bake in. Uh, into your products. There's a question back there. Um, yeah, actually, I have, I have three really. Um, is there API? Is there API access for charts and maybe even like directly to taking data from a spreadsheet and putting it directly into a PDF? Yeah. So um, uh, that's actually two questions. I think. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I'll answer the first one. The charts one's actually really good. So um, there's a really good blog post about how do you create dashboards with App Script. So in simple terms because it's not completely true. You can do everything you can do with spreadsheets through scripts. So if in spreadsheets you can create a chart, if in spreadsheets you can uh, um, you know, change a value or compute a custom formula, that's something you can do with scripts. So a lot of people have built some very interesting visualization through, um, uh, through App Script. So that's, that's definitely a, a very good example of something that we can do. Um, take a look at that blog post. It's under developers.google.com and then look for App Script specifically. Uh, as far as PDF goes, you can request a document with any MIME type. Again, uh, with caveat. 
Uh, so you can say, give it to me as a Word doc, give it to me as a PDF, give it to me as HTML, and it'll actually return it. Um, so you can say, when you say, get this um, doc app dot, I don't know where it is exactly, but there's a way to get it as a particular MIME type, and then once you ask for the URL and email that URL, you're essentially sending out a PDF to someone. So it's actually quite powerful that way. Uh, I realized when I, when I asked the first question, I said charts, but I was thinking of drawings. Mm. You know, I mean, if the I drawing's have, not exposed yet, not yet. That's a good question. Um, and if you wanted to, could you program the back end for a gadget using App Script? Yes. Um, I think gadget's kind of a loaded term um, because there's a bunch of like iGoogle has its own gadgets. Um, I don't know about iGoogle mm. um, sites. Google Sites has a concept of gadgets, and you can code that using App Script. Uh, the Sites gadget, are those the ones that you can put in the uh, Gmail interface as well? Yes. Yeah, so it's quite powerful there. So what do you guys think? Makes sense? Do you guys know about this? <laughs> um, so uh, we, we think it's quite powerful. This, um, you know, the API is actually really robust. Uh, definitely worth taking a look at uh, the, the docs. Uh, we also do Google Developers Live. I think we're doing one next week. So every Thursday is either morning or afternoon, depending on uh, alternating weeks between mornings and afternoons for folks in Europe and the West Coast. Um, and uh, definitely join join in if you're just interested in trying to see what other people are doing. Uh, we'll usually do a code walkthrough or a Q&A session. Uh, it's actually a really good way to stay in touch with us. Great.